Hello, welcome to another interesting economics class. My name is Emmanuel Widow. Today we'll be considering the topic agencies that regulate the financial market in the team financial institutions and regulatory agencies. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to define financial market, identify regulatory agencies and the aspects of the market regulated by each and state the objectives and tools used by these regulatory agencies. Federal, states and local governments have a need for huge capital in order to bring forth projects that will make life easy for our citizens. These huge capitals can only be gotten or sourced from the financial market. Although we may have our views on why we have numerous financial institutions doing almost the same thing, these institutions do have a function to perform in our daily lives. What exactly is a financial market? A financial market is a market in which people trade financial securities and derivatives at low transaction cost. This financial securities ranges from stocks, shares, and bonds, and they are regulated by institutions. Financial institutions cut across a broad range of business operations within the financial service sector, including banks, trust companies, broker firms, and investment dealers. Now, virtually everyone living in developed countries have a need for the financial market. Some of the financial institutions that regulate the financial market, especially in Nigeria, are the Federal Ministry of Finance, the Central Bank of Nigeria, Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation, Securities and Exchange Commission, and lastly, National Insurance Commission. Let's take a look at these institutions one after the other. The Federal Ministry of Finance. This ministry was established in 1958 to replace the finance department. The ministry is responsible for the control of Nigeria's public finance. Some of these functions include preparing annual estimates of revenue and expenditures of the federal government. Now, the agency collates the information of government expenditures and the revenue gotten from the exportation of mineral resources from Nigeria in a bid to know if Nigeria is actually growing economically or not. The second function of the Ministry of Finance is to formulate policies on fiscal and monetary matters. These policies are aimed at controlling the exchange rates and inflation rates in Nigeria. The next function of the Ministry of Finance is mobilizing domestic and external financial resources through both internal and external financial institutions for development purposes. Now, this they do by collating money, not in physical form, but the actual value of money traded in the stock market for government purposes. This is channeled into development projects such as building the construction of roads and building of hospitals. Furthermore, we have the function of the Federal Ministry of Finance as maintaining adequate foreign exchange reserve aimed at ensuring a healthy balance of payment position. Now, as a country, we engage in trade and trade brings in foreign reserve. The Federal Ministry of Finance looks at our foreign reserve and tries to maintain that reserve in a way that Nigeria will not be found in debt. That is one of the functions of the Federal Ministry of Finance. And lastly, supervising the insurance industry. The insurance company absorbs the risk of human beings. 
by agreeing to pay a certain amount to an individual who faces such risk. Now, what the Federal Ministry of Finance does is that it controls these insurance companies with respect to premium paid to the insured. The next financial institution that regulates the financial market is the Central Bank of Nigeria. This bank is the apex monetary authority of Nigeria. Established by the CBN Act of 1958 and commenced operation on 1st July 1959, this bank is headed by the governor of the central bank and it is charged with the responsibility of administering the banks and other financial institutions act of 1991 as amended with the sole aim of ensuring that these financial institutions provide the best services to those who use them you will agree with me that if financial market is left uncontrolled then certain individuals might infiltrate into the financial market and make it difficult for people to actually use them what are the objectives of the central bank number one it is to maintain external reserves by safeguarding the international value of the legal tender by that we mean that the central bank is charged with the responsibility of making sure that the legal tender can compete with its rivals in terms of currency that means we are looking at in our situation nigeria and our currency being naira competing with other currencies such as the dollar and the euros in terms of exchange rate the second objective of the central bank is to provide economic and financial advice to the federal government this they do to ensure that the federal government does not in any way use its resources in projects that will not bring in profit the central bank provides advice on projects the government can venture into in order to improve its foreign reserve such advices could range from exportation of goods and possibly importation of goods that may increase our foreign reserves the next objective is to promote a sound financial system in nigeria by promoting a sound financial system we are actually looking at the coordination of the economic sector of nigeria another objective of the central bank is to issue legal tender in nigeria the central bank is the only institution that has the right to issue the naira to the public no other institution in nigeria has such rights Furthermore, an objective of the CBN is to ensure monetary and price stability. This means that with the power vested on the Naira from the CBN, one Naira in Lagos should be equivalent to one Naira in Kano. That's price stability. And we are also looking at it in the sense that our one naira in Lagos should be able to get the same quantity of goods in another location in the same country. Also, an objective of the CBN is to monitor the trading activities of banking and other financial institutions. The money we put into our banks are also used for businesses. The central bank regulates those activities in order to ensure that these institutions do not engage in businesses that will make the customers of those institutions suffer and lastly an objective of the central bank is to regulate the financial activities of commercial banks this they do by issuing them an act which serves as rules and regulations they must follow in order to run business as financial markets in Nigeria. The second agency 
that controls financial markets is one known as the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation. This agency is an independent government agency charged with the responsibility of protecting depositors and guaranteeing payment of insured funds in the event of failure of insured institutions. In this case, we are looking at an agency that is supposed to regulate or that is charged with the responsibility of regulating insurance companies. One of the functions of NDIC is ensuring all deposit liabilities of licensed banks and such other financial institutions operating in Nigeria. That means you go into an insurance company, you get yourself insured. The insurance company you, which you have bought their policy from has to also go to the NDIC in order to get insured so that you do not lose your money. Secondly, it has a function of giving assistance to insured institutions in the interest of depositors in case of imminent or actual financial difficulties of banks, particularly where suspension of payment is threatened. So the NDIC as a financial institution that regulates the financial market, assists financial markets such as banks and insurance companies in giving them maybe loan in order for them not to fold and then those who deposited money with them end up losing. Also, the key function of NDIC is guaranteeing payments to depositors in case of eminent or actual suspension of payments by insured institutions up to the maximum. What does this mean? That in a situation where an insurance company folds up, closes down, NDIC ensures that those who took insurance policies from these institutions are paid their premium to the fullest. Another important function of NDIC is assisting in the formulation and implementation of monetary policies so as to ensure sound banking practices and fair competition among insured institutions in the country. So NDIC, along with other financial institutions, formulate policies that help monitor the activities of insurance companies or insured institutions. And lastly, the function of Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, is pursuing other measures necessary to achieve the functions of the corporation, provided that such measures and actions are not pungent to the objects of the corporation. This means that NDIC has a function to regulate measures necessary to achieve the functions of this corporation. That means once in a while, they have to go in and check what exactly these institutions are doing. Are they following the rules and objectives of the NDIC? Another agency that regulates the financial markets is the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. This commission is the main regulatory institution of Nigeria and it is supervised by the Ministry of Finance. It maintains surveillance over the Nigerian Stock Exchange to ensure that there is no trading abuse. This institution has two major functions. The first is regulating the capital market with a view of protecting investors. Since this has to do with the trading of stocks, shares, and bonds, the SEC regulates the activities of the Exchange Commission, that is the Stock Exchange Commission, to ensure that stocks traded at the exchange market are done within the terms and conditions of the Securities and Exchange Commission. The last function of the Securities and Exchange Commission is to develop the capital market 
in order to enhance its allocative efficiency and pave the way for a private sector led economy. Now, you will agree with me that shares bonds are ways through which government uses to generate funds for capital projects. Now, what SEC does is that it regulates the trading activities such that those trading activities will lead to a growth in the Nigerian economy. Let's proceed to looking at another agency that regulates the financial market called the National Insurance Commission, NICOM. This commission was established in 1997 by the National Insurance Commission Act of 1997 with the responsibility of ensuring the effective administration, supervision, regulation, and control of insurance businesses in Nigeria. So just like NDIC, NICOM also performs the same function. But there are other key functions of NICOM. Let's look at them. The first of them is to establish standards for the conduct of insurance businesses in Nigeria. So NICOM also formulates policies, rules and regulations for insurance companies to follow while doing business. The second is to approve rates of insurance premiums to be paid in respect to all classes of insured businesses. So NICOM regulates how much an insured person should be paid at the end of any insurance policy. Another function of NICOM is to ensure adequate protection of strategic government assets and other properties. Government assets such as the central bank, government hospitals are all insured by these institutions. These institutions ensure these government assets so that if anything such as fire outbreak occurs, these institutions will have something to build up on. They also regulate transactions between insurers and reinsurers within and outside Nigeria. That means NICOM is the mediator between those who insure and those who are actually coming to take up an insurance policy. Another function of NICOM is to act as an advisor to the federal government on all insurance related matters. So when the federal government builds a beautiful structure, NICOM goes to the federal government to tell them that there is a need for such a structure to be insured against fire outbreak, flood, and the rest of them. They also provide approved standards, conditions, and warranties applicable to all classes of insurance policy. Now, this still has to do with giving them standards, giving the insurance companies standards to follow while doing business. And lastly, they protect insurance policyholders beneficiaries and third parties of insurance contracts. How do they do that? With the backing of NICOM, no insurance company can actually rob you of your premium when it is due. Because NICOM is actually monitoring them, they have the right to pay the insured his full amount of premium at the end of any insurance policy. The last but not the least of the institutions that regulate the financial market is the Debt Management Office. The DMO was established on 4th of October 2000 to centrally coordinate the management of Nigeria's debt. This was formally done by various agencies. However, these agencies had inefficiencies. As such, there was a need for the Debt Management Office 
in order to control how much Nigeria borrows and uses for capital projects. Now, what are the functions of DMO? The first of them is providing good debt management practices and policies that will bring positive impact on economic growth and development. So when Nigeria wishes to borrow money from Paris Club, China, and the rest of them, the debt management office has to go to the president and tell him why it is necessary or not necessary for such debt or such loans to be borrowed. Another function of the DMO is achieving positive impact on overall microeconomic management, including monetary and fiscal policies. So when the federal government eventually borrows money, the debt management office ensures that such loans given to the federal government is used for the purpose it was meant for. So the debt management office has a function to monitor the loans the federal government has taken for capital projects. The next function of the debt management office is to consciously avoid debt crisis and achieving an orderly growth and development of the national economy. This means that not all debts taken by a government can bring economic growth. Thus, the DMO has to ensure that debts incurred by Nigeria has to be for economic growth and development of the nation. Another function of the debt management office is to improve the nation's borrowing capacity and its ability to manage debt efficiently in promoting economic growth and national development. Now, it is likened to what I just explained before. This means that when a loan is given, the DMO and the federal government has to ensure that it is aimed at economic growth and development, else such loans should not be taken. Furthermore, DMO has a function of protecting and promoting a good image of Nigeria as a disciplined and organized nation capable of managing its assets and liabilities. The debts, the loans taken from the federal government are used for capital projects. The DMO is charged with the responsibility of putting Nigeria in a good light in terms of managing these projects because these debts are borrowed from foreign sources. The last function of the DMO is prudently raising finance to fund government deficits at affordable cost and manageable risk in the medium and long term. That means the DMO has the function of going into the market to source for funds suitable for the government in the short and long run. The DMO as an institution is not looking for funds that will be used to just do a project. Now the DMO also considers how much those who are actually giving us the loan are also giving us to pay back. That means the payback period. So the DMO is charged with the responsibility of looking at the suitable loan agency that will give Nigeria the ability to repay the loan so taken. Having considered the different financial institutions that regulate the financial market, now let's take a quick summary of what we have gathered so far. In this class, we learned that the financial market is a market in which people trade financial securities and derivatives at low transaction cost. We also learned that securities include stocks and bonds and precious metals. We further learned that financial market is being regulated by financial institutions or agencies. We also learned that financial agencies are institutions who engage in the business of financial and monetary transactions. 
we further learned that some financial institutions that regulate the financial market include the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Security and Exchange Commission, and the Federal Ministry of Finance. Going forward, we learned that the Federal Ministry of Finance is responsible for the management and control of Nigeria's public finance. We further learned that the National Insurance Commission is responsible for the effective administration, supervision, regulation, and control of insurance business in Nigeria. And lastly, we learned that Securities and Exchange Commission maintains surveillance over the Nigerian Stock Exchange with the mandate of ensuring orderly and equitable dealings in securities and protecting the market against insider abuse in trade. Now we have come to the end of our class for today. But before I go, let's take a few questions to test how much we have learned in this class. Question 1. Dash is responsible for the management and control of Nigeria's public finance. A. The Central Bank of Nigeria. B. The Federal Ministry of Finance. Or C. The Nigerian Stock Exchange Commission. The correct answer to this question is B. The Federal Ministry of Finance. Question 2. Dash maintains surveillance over the Nigerian Stock Exchange. A. Securities and Exchange Commission. B. National Insurance Commission. Or C. The Central Bank of Nigeria. The correct answer to this question is A. Securities and Exchange Commission. At this point, I believe you can now define the financial market, state few institutions that regulate the financial market and their respective functions. Until I see you in another interesting economics class. Bye-bye.